Hi folks, let's talk about analyzing data. And in particular, let's talk about analyzing data that you might have collected during a lab or during an experiment. Um, in physics, well, there are lots of different kinds of algebraic relationships that exist in the universe, that's for sure. But in a first or even maybe a second year uh, physics course, especially, well, particularly in an introductory level physics course, there are, uh, well, a couple, three or four, three or four algebraic relationships that you will ever see. Ever is a strong word. Usually see. Okay? And one of them that you need to be able to uh, recognize, of course, but I wouldn't even draw this one. Don't draw, if you're drawing at home, don't draw this. Um, one is, is a is a set of, is a relationship that looks like that. Uh, well, hopefully, obviously, you can see that this means that there's a direct relationship between y and x. All right, y and x are directly related, which is to say that well, here's a value of x and an associated value of y. If you double that amount of x, well, you double the y. If you triple the x, well, you triple the y. This, I write like this, and I mean by this, is proportional to. This says that y is proportional to x. All right, so if and when you graph a set of data and you get a straight line, you say, oh, okay, those two things are proportional. They are directly related. And what that means is we can replace is proportional to with is something times x. All right? Now, other relationships you'll see. You might sometimes collect some data, graph that data, and maybe what you get is something, uh, well, that suggests the following. We got a value of uh, x and an associated, uh, how about this, value of x and an associated value with uh, of y. And then if you double that value of x, well, this value of y doesn't double, but, well, it, it does, it, it quadruples. And you triple that value of x, and, well, we don't triple the y value, we uh, multiply it by 9, and, and that makes a curve like this. And Well, mathematically, what I just talked about is saying that whatever we do to x, we square that when y changes. This suggests that y is proportional to x squared. All right, so this goes 1, 2, 3. This goes 1, 4, 9. All right, and that's called a quadratic, right? There are lots of quadratic relationships in physics, like um, delta x is one half a t squared, or k is one half m v squared. There are some other sets of data that maybe you'll graph sometime that says, well, I got some value of x, and there's an associated value of y. And then when I double this value of x, well, I get half as much y. And then when I uh, triple the value of x, I get a third as much of the initial y. And then I quadruple the value of x and I get a quarter as much of the initial y. And that thing does this. And this curve seems to suggest the relationship that I just talked about where we're saying that y is proportional to the inverse of x. Now you might not recognize this oh, this thing doubled and that thing got half as big. But what you should recognize is the shape of this graph and or the shape of this graph. Notice those shapes are quite different. All right. And there's a, well, okay, so what are these um, inverse relationships? This is, called an, this is called an 
inverse relationship, inverse, as opposed to over here, quadratic. So what kind of inverse relationships do we see in physics? Well, we see like uh, about um, AC is V squared over R, over R. Or, 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 uh, like, you know, um, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, Newton's second law, net F divided by M. Notice we got a one over. All right, and there's one, there's another one that you'll see sometimes, which is, uh, this one's tougher still. You might also see one that's a little, well, that exists, um, that looks like an inverse, but is even like more pronounced. There are inverse square relationships in physics, particularly um, a couple of force laws, gravitational force, G, M, M over R squared, like y and x squared, and uh, an electrostatic force, kqq over r squared. All right, and there are other ones, of course, you know, but those, these are the three primary ones that you'll see that aren't just linear, all right? Now, um, so this is called inverse square. So, when it comes to collecting data, graphing the data, one thing you ought to do, one thing you ought to be able to do is, if you see a graph, you should be able to say to yourself, what relationship does this graph suggest? Does it look like this, well, what's called a parabola in the quadratic graph over here? Does it look like a parabola? All right. Um, does it... Does it have this general sort of pattern where, I mean, you know, what's the nature of an inverse? The nature of an inverse is, you know, very generically, as this gets bigger, this gets smaller. As this gets smaller, that gets bigger. I mean, that's qualitatively what inverse means. Quantitatively, it quite literally means you double one thing, you cut something else in half. But again, you might not be able to tell that based on the range of data that you chose. Maybe when you were collecting data, you never ended up doubling the value of x. And so you could never see a, on your graph, you might not see an associated cutting y in half. But you should be able to look at this trend and see what the data suggests. All right, so that's this question. What does your data suggest? That means look at the curve and know what curve is associated with what kind of mathematical function. All right. No, you know what I haven't said? You know what you haven't heard me say? Exponential. Is that an exponential? I think most um, most introductory level physics kids, when they say people, when they say uh, 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 exponential, they mean there's an exponent here. Does that mean it's exponential? To a physicist person type, it does not mean that. All right. If you mean quadratic, say quadratic. All right. Just because there's an exponent doesn't make it an exponential. So rid yourself of the desire to say exponential. Okay. Now, again, let, let's say that you just all you have is a shape on a graph, and you think, all right, maybe that suggests that this is a quadratic. Maybe it suggests that it's an inverse. Maybe an inverse square. And that shouldn't be a guess. You shouldn't say, I don't know. I can't tell if it's quadratic or inverse. You can tell because these two shapes don't look the same. They're both curves. Yeah, all right, fine. They're both curves. But uh, in quadratics, you know, this thing can have the point zero, zero. And as X stuff gets bigger, Y stuff gets bigger. Um, this inverse is, well, has two asymptotes at Y axis. This thing will never get to Y axis. It'll never get to X axis. Inverse square, okay, that looks like inverse, but is um, more severe. All right, so they're fundamentally different in their in their structure those two kinds of curves so here's the question you get some raw data in a graph you plot that data it's not a straight line so you can't just say yep look they're directly related you get a curve 
you have to, one of your one of your tasks might be to say, well, how do I get a how do I figure out what really is related to what? Well, here's what you do. If you think that this is the relationship, then what you do is you can make another graph. You can make another graph where you plot the two things that you think are proportional. Because remember, if a graph shows two things that are proportional, well, then that graph is straight. So we see a straight graph and say, okay, I know that y is proportional to x. But if you are saying, I think that y is proportional to x squared, well, how do you check that? You plot your y values versus the square of your x values. You quite literally get out your calculator and you graph, or, or sorry, you calculate the square of all your x values. And then you plot that graph. And if your data is quadratic, then this line will be, or this graph will show a straight line. You can now say, aha, this straight line is proof that y is proportional to x squared. I could guess by the shape of this graph, I now have evidence because I've shown it mathematically and graphically. All right? How do you know if a relationship really is inverse? Well, what you do is you keep your y values and then instead of just the x values, if you're suggesting that y is proportional to the inverse of the x's, well, you get out your calculator, you calculate the inverse of all of these x values, you see what those numbers are, you plot those numbers versus your y values, and guess what? This will be straight. And this says, aha, I now have proof that y is proportional to 1 over x, because a graph of y versus 1 over x is straight, and straight graphs means the things on the axes are proportional. All right, this one, you would take out your calculator, you would calculate uh, the inverse of the square of those x values, you would figure out a good scale to use on a graph, you would graph those, and you would say, aha, I now have evidence that y is, the stuff on the y-axis is indeed proportional to the inverse of the square of the stuff on the x. Right, so this exercise of making another graph from your raw data because you manipulate your raw data to reflect what you think is true, what relationship you think exists between the two quantities you've originally uh, compared, well, you can get evidence that if you're right or not. Okay, so make sure you know what these three graphs look like and why. Because, again, for introductory level physics stuff, those are the most common relationships we see. We don't see a lot of cubic. We don't see a lot of uh, logarithmic. We don't see a lot of um, really what is called exponential. Believe me, those things exist, but not in first year physics. Okay? Now, I'm going to take this to a different, um, sort of a different, more extreme case. And what I've done here is I've got some some uh, some data that I made up, all right? Um, I just picked some x values. I picked some y values um, to, and I've made a formula in here that I'm not going to show you, but I've made a formula of how uh, these y values get calculated, all right? And so let's just assume this is some uh, this is some raw data, all right? Well, you know, you might do this with a piece of graph paper, or if you're an Excel type. You can just make a graph, then you go, aha, well, looky here. This graph, I'm going to change it a little bit to that. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, because really, you know, you'd start with this, but what you want to be able to do, another skill you need to have is to draw the general trend that this data um, presents. And so you'd make that sketch, all right? And then you'd say, okay, well, what does that suggest? Um, I mean, my first guess here, do you have a first guess? I do. My first guess is that maybe this is quadratic. Doesn't it look like a parabola? Half a parabola? So here's what you do to check that. Is this quadratic? Well, if it's quadratic, that means that this y-axis stuff is proportional to the square of the x-axis stuff. So here's what I'm going to do. Watch. I'm going to take out my calculator, and I'm going to say, let's make this 
uh, let's make this column all these squared. And if you don't know how to do Excel, that doesn't matter. I'm telling this cell to calculate that cell raised to the second. And now I'm doing that with all of these. Again, I don't care if you don't know how to use Excel. It doesn't matter. And now look. Now I'm going to plot the y stuff versus the square of x stuff because I my my supposition from this graph was that y is proportional to x squared. It looks like that relationship. So let's graph that stuff and see what shakes out. What do we? Oh, well, hang on. That's not it's not really straight. That's not straight, right? That's still curvy. So it appears that x is x stuff is not proportional to y squared. So what should we do now? Well, um, I don't know. Maybe it happens to be that it's really this stuff cubed, and so I'll just try that. Let's 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 try uh, x cubed instead. Um, x cubed. Watch this. I'll just change all these. Oh, look at that. Look at that straight graph. That straight graph. That linear graph gives us very good evidence that it appears that the stuff on the y-axis is proportional to the cube of the stuff on the x-axis. Again, this graph gives me evidence for that. This graph is straight. I could take a ruler and draw a line of best fit. Right here, uh, and here being here on this data, I would never take a ruler and try to draw a line that fits that data. It ain't linear. This data is linear. All right, and thus we have proof that it seems like y is proportional to x cubed. And remember, I made a formula up for this, uh, all right, this uh, this y axis. And here's the for here's the formula. Can you see that? Hang on. Yeah, the formula is 0.85. Arbitrarily, I made that up out of nowhere. Look, times this stuff. B6. B6 is a cell. This cell, x, raised to the third. So that is the formula that I use for these. I took all the x values. I happen to multiply by some constant. And then I took the x value and raised it to the third. So indeed, if we plot y versus x to the third, we get a straight line. All right, so when you can be a good guesser of what a function what a graph, what a set of data seems to suggest. This seems to suggest quadratic. How do you know? Well, go plot what you think is true. Plot versus, plot y versus 1, or, or sorry, plot y versus x squared. This seems to suggest inverse, which means y is proportional to 1 over x. Get yourself some proof. Plot y versus 1 over x. Calculate all the 1 over x's. All right, you think it's an inverse square? Maybe you tried inverse first. And it didn't come out straight. All right, so try 1 over x squared. Just like here, you know, I tried x squared first, but it didn't come out linear when I graphed that. So I tried x cubed. Okay? So that's how, um, as a scientist, you can provide proof for what relationship exists between data. Between two sets of data? Sure. Between two sets of variables? Yeah, sure. What relationship exists? with the data you've collected. Okay? Okay, farewell.